Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome in for another episode of Swiss Cheese and Beats. My name is Daniel. This is episode 20. And for the very first time, we're gonna be discussing a practice pad. In fact, not just any practice pad, but a total game changer when it came out. And that is, of course, the Vic Firth Heavy Hitters Slim and Stock Pads. Before getting started, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy new year, a very happy 2018. Hope all of you got to spend some time with loved ones, some friends, some family, got to ring in the new year just the way you wanted, whether it was at a party or whether it was nice and low key in your home by yourself. Whatever it is, I hope you got to do you and are looking forward to the upcoming year. Also, if you're new here, in case you've never seen anything done on this channel before, we do things such as product reviews, some drum lessons, anything that really has to do with percussion, specifically marching percussion. We'll see if we get into some other types of percussion as we progress. It's quite a possibility, but you never know. But if you're checking this place out for the very first time, please consider hitting that red subscribe button down below. Before getting into the review, just like every review done on this channel, they are 100% completely non-sponsored meaning I don't receive any type of monetary value for these reviews. I don't receive a script of anything that I'm supposed to say. These are simply things that I either own or even the company sends me to experiment with, take a look at, and I try to find things that I think would not only interest myself, but also interest you guys as an audience in order to help you make a decision on whether or not this could be something you wanna purchase. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the two guys who came up with the design as well as the production of the very first heavy hitter snare drum pad. That is of course Chris Romanowski and Bill Bachman. A little about Chris, he is a graduate from the Berklee School of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. He currently works in Cobb County, Georgia, where he is the director of percussion for not only Hillgrove High School, but the two middle schools that are also part of that school's cluster. Chris has worked with numerous programs ranging from middle school all the way to the drum corps level. And in fact, since 2007, he has been a judge for percussion and ensemble music at the DCI level, including judging during DCI finals. Now, a little bit about Bill Bachman. Bill is also a graduate of the Berklee School of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. He also studied percussion performance over at the University of North Texas for a bit. In fact, he was on that crazy 96 quad line at NT, you know, the, the one with the lick. You know the lick. It ends with like, say ya, best tenors. That one. Sweet, sweet. He has taught and performed with many world-class groups, including the North Texas Drumline, the Cadets of Bergen County, as well as the Carolina Crown, to name just a few. Bill is a highly sought after clinician judge. In fact, he's also an author. He came out with the Rudimental Instructional Series books of the Logic Series, which is the Rudimental Logic, probably his most well-known, which is the Quad Logic, as well as Bass Logic. In fact, Bill also has his own quad mallet out with Vic Firth, which probably has the greatest name for a drumstick in the history of mankind. But the stick I'm talking about is, of course, the Billy Club. Oh, Billy. <laughs> and no, we won't be talking about these bad boys today, but if you're interested, leave a comment below. So Chris and Bill first began the project of creating and designing the very first heavy hitter pad in 2001. 2001. So, for those of you not born yet, let me set the mood here. In 2001, the very first Harry Potter movie came out, gas was $1.43 a gallon, there was no iPhone, and in fact, Apple just released the announcement of some program they were gonna roll out called iTunes. Damn, I'm old. So in 2001, these guys get everything together, they produce this great pad, they release it at PASIC 01, it's super popular, orders start coming in, but orders start coming in so fast that it's quite a bit for these two guys to fulfill just on their own. So after some negotiation, in 2003 at PASIC, Vic Firth releases their version of the Heavy Hitter Snare Drum Pad. So we have two versions of the Heavy Hitter Snare Drum Pad. The first one's going to be the Stock Pad, which is model HHPST, the second is the Slim Pad, which is model HHPSL. 
So while these two are a little bit different, they both have quite a few similarities. So let's go over those first. First and foremost, each one is 12 inches in diameter. They are both made of a wood base, which is painted purple, as you can see here, with a thickness of three quarters of an inch. Both playing surfaces on the pads are made of the gum rubber material you see here, and they both have a quarter inch thick gripping pad attached to the bottom of the wood base to help keep the pad completely still and slip free on any surface that you would be drumming on. So for a lot of people, including myself, practice pad mobility is a huge factor when it comes to deciding on what kind of pad to buy. I want to be able to grab my pad and take it around wherever I go, but I don't want to have to carry it in my hand. So I like to make sure that they pass the backpack test. And that of course is making sure that the drum pad fits easily inside my backpack. I can just throw the bag over my shoulder, be on my way, and this pad passes the test. Now let's go over a couple of differences as far as how they look and feel. The slim pad playing side is approximately one eighth of an inch in thickness, hence the name slim pad, and comes in weighing right at three pounds. The stock pad playing surface measures in right at three sixteenths of an inch, which is exactly 50% thicker than the slim pad playing surface, and the stock pad weighs in at a couple of ounces right underneath three and a half pounds. Now as far as sound and feel, the stock pad is going to have a little bit of a faster action, faster rebound off the thicker playing surface. The rim shots are going to sound a little bit fatter because the overall tone whenever you play on the surface is going to be a little bit lower pitch. So you may have an issue hearing yourself over other pads or over outside noise depending on what kind of practice environment you're in. If you're alone, you don't have any issues hearing anything at all but that may be something just to be a little bit aware of. The slim pad does have a little bit slower action on it versus the stock pad simply because the playing surface is a little bit thinner. The pitch and tone produced when you practice on this pad is much higher, so you shouldn't have any type of problem hearing yourself over other pads no matter what type of practice environment you're in. The only thing I would say to be careful about this is that because it is such a high pitch, when you hit a rim shot just the right way, you end up hearing this. Just like when the person next to you in the line hits a really good rim shot. And we all know how awesome that is. So let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side sound test. I'm gonna go ahead and play a few exercises on both the stock pad and the slim pad, as well as a musical excerpt. That way you guys can hear just how different they are. And just so you have a frame of reference for the sound test, I'm gonna go ahead and use the OG Ralph Hardiman snare drum stick. Now as a bit of a game changer to these pads, Vic Firth released these very thin Mylar laminates to go ahead and throw on these pads to change not only the sound, but also the feel. While you may look at the laminate and think that it is pretty thin, they are pretty heavy duty. You can hear this, you can hear this. So it's really not gonna have any issue taking a beating from a pair of sticks. But let's go ahead and slap these bad boys on the pads and hear how they change the sound.
Now that we have the laminates on, the sound is definitely gonna change. So let's go ahead and do an additional sound test playing the same exercises, the same musical excerpt on both the stock pad and the slim pad, but now with laminates. Overall, I think both of these pads are built really well. They're really durable. They sound great. And I like the fact that there are two different versions because for me on snare drums, I like my top heads to have a little bit of give. I wanna feel myself compressing the air through the drum, making the snares resonate. So I'm gonna lean more towards the slim pad. However, some people like to have faster action. They like to take those top heads up a little bit more. And for you, I would probably lean more towards the stock pad. Either way, by picking up one of these pads, you really can't go wrong. You will definitely be satisfied. If you're thinking about picking one up, you wanna find out where to get one, there are a couple of links down below, one for each pad, as well as an additional link for the laminate that you can order if you like the way that sounded as well. As always, I wanna hear what you guys have to say about these pads. If you own one, leave down in the comments below what you think about them. If you don't have one, but you're thinking about buying one, or maybe you have questions about it, also leave those in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're on social media, which I believe most of the world is, please consider sharing this using those share buttons down here on the bottom right. And of course, if you have yet to do so, please consider subscribing to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in once again. I will see you next time.